Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Another charge for District 10 Council member Clayton Perry. What prosecutors are saying about the case so far. And former President Trump's company has been convicted of tax fraud. How Trump is responding to the verdict and what the conviction means for him going forward. We're really stuck in a rut weather-wise. Morning drizzle and fog and then kind of cloudy, muggy days. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday. It is December 7th. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, I got a little warm yesterday afternoon, and it just seems to be continuing. I switched the uh, furnace over to AC, AC and I heard mm -hmm. it kick on last night, Mike yeah. Oster Hage. Yeah. You, that's the best way to put it though. It's stuck in a rut because I was thinking about that this morning. It's just that that sort of blast or sort of weather. It's like do something, you know. The one thing it is doing though, it's way too warm. Yesterday 80, we're going to be up close to the record today within just a degree of that as well as tomorrow. Almost a record this morning for the highest low temperature. Yeah, isn't that fun? And it, it is December 7th, by the way, yes. just in case you were wondering when you step outside. A little bit of uh, kind of that, that hazy look off there in the distance. This is 10 looking up uh, out toward the hill, or excuse me, out toward the medical center. Further out, obviously, toward the hill country where you are going to run into a little bit of fog out there in Kerrville. Not bad in and around town right now. Uvalde has some fog. And then it seems like it's kind of on the bookends this morning. Eagle Pass, a lot of fog. Rock Springs, Victoria Beeville down to zero visibility so heading down 37 you may run into some of that fog and as was the case yesterday it started to get thicker as the morning rolled on so just watch that over the course of the next couple of hours a little bit of mist out there i didn't really see any this morning on the windshield but there's probably going to be some especially in and around some of that fog 69 degrees as of right now the normal high temperature is 66 yeah, things are just way out of whack and we've got just a ton of humidity out there. Dew points are well up in the mid to upper 60s right now. You definitely notice it when you step outside. Mold is on the high side and throughout the rest of today, Boy, same old starts, some upper 60s, fog, some mist out there, and then we will have mostly cloudy skies, 82. The record is 83, so very, very close call. Just as hot tomorrow, and it's going to be staying very, very warm, almost on the hot side all the way through the weekend. There is a glimmer of hope way down the road. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Mike, thank you. See you in a bit. The capital murder trial against a former Border Patrol agent is almost over. Closing arguments are set for today. Our Jonathan Cotto joins us live and walks us through the latest details. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Stephanie. That's right. Later this morning, closing arguments are expected, followed by the jury's deliberation. And if found guilty, Juan David Ortiz could automatically be sentenced to life in prison without parole. Now, we know Ortiz is accused of murdering four sex workers near Laredo. Prosecutors spent days sharing evidence and testimony. Now, the def defense has already rested its case without calling any witnesses. A firearms expert says bullet casings in those murders belong to the government-issued weapon Ortiz owned. Now you can learn more about this this case by watching KSAT's exclusive open court, the trial of Juan David Ortiz by going to our website KSAT.com on our TV app KSAT Plus and of course our YouTube channel. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Jonathan. And more trouble for District 10 City Council member Clayton Perry. San Antonio police filed an at-large case of the DWI against the councilman. It comes exactly one month since the hit and run crash he admitted to being involved in. The Bear County District Attorney's Office also confirmed that case, along with the charge of failure to stop and render aid. Now prosecutors are viewing the case. From there, they will decide whether to prosecute. Right now, it's not clear when they will make that decision. Guilty on all counts. That's a verdict against the Trump Organization, the former president's real estate company charged with fraud and other financial crimes. And what comes next is less certain. ABC's Morgan Norwood tells us why. A New York jury has convicted the family business that made former President Donald Trump a billionaire, finding the Trump Organization guilty of criminal tax fraud. Criminal convictions uh, in contrast to prior civil matters. Uh, and the broader message, right, this was a case about cheating, lying, greed. Prosecutors said for 15 years, executives at the Trump Organization leaned on the company to evade income taxes on rent, private school tuition, 
and luxury cars. The case was built around testimony from the company's former finance chief, Alan Weisselberg, who previously pleaded guilty to manipulating the company's books to reduce his taxes. Weisselberg testified in exchange for a five-month jail sentence. Alan, any message for Donald Trump? Back behind us. Trump himself was not on trial, but prosecutors claimed Trump was not blissfully ignorant. They showed Trump's initials on a salary reduction memo, which investigators say cheated tax authorities. And they showed checks signed by Trump, which they say funded Weisselberg's grandkids' private school tuition. In a new interview, the Manhattan District Attorney referring to yesterday's verdict as only one chapter. We paused today because this is quite consequential, a criminal conviction for the, the former president's namesake uh, corporations. Uh, but the work continues. The Trump Organization called the verdict preposterous. Uh, will certainly be appealing, of course. At sentencing next month, the company faces a $1.7 million fine, but could face wider fallout from banks and other firms whose corporate policies ban them from doing business with felons. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, New York. Democratic Senator Raphael Warnock has defeated Republican challenger Herschel Walker in Georgia's runoff election. The win gives Democrats an outright majority in the Senate for the rest of President Biden's current term. Democrats will have that 51-49 majority, gaining a seat from the current 50-50 split with John Fetterman's victory in the state of Pennsylvania. It will be a, still a divided government with Republicans having flipped control of the House of Representatives. Congress is demanding answers from Ticketmaster over the Taylor Swift ticketing fiasco. The House Energy and Commerce Committee plans to question the CEO of Ticketmaster's parent company, Live Nation, on December 15th. Millions of Taylor Swift fans were not able to get tickets to see the singer-songwriter perform. Many fans who got access to the pre-sell were met with delays, lockouts, and aggressive bots. Ticketmaster has apologized, saying its site couldn't keep up with the overwhelming demand. Meanwhile, the Justice Department is reportedly investigating Live Nation to see whether it has a monopoly in the mar market for concerts. A mother's heartbreak was shared with a community in North Texas last night. Maitland Gandhi spoke at a vigil held at a church in Paradise near Fort Worth. Gandhi's seven-year-old daughter, Athena, disappeared November 30th while she was outside her home. Authorities say Athena's suspected killer, Tanner Horner, is in jail and facing capital murder and aggravated kidnapping charges. They say Horner was driving a FedEx truck, making a delivery to Athena's home at the time she disappeared. Two days later, authorities found the child's body near a river. 437, 69 degrees. And coming up next, we're going to tell you about a big announcement expected today from UTSA quarterback Frank Harris and his future with the Roadrunners. Checking on traffic for you early, early bird commuters right now at 437. The roads look really good right now at 281 and Sprucewood. The roads are dry. The fog is not a problem yet, but again, kind of like yesterday, we are expecting the possibility of things to deteriorate in the next couple of hours. And let's look out there with a live cam. Not feeling like December at all, and we're well into it already, but 69 degrees to start your day. We'll be right back. Four forty. Welcome back. UTSA quarterback Frank Harris will be making a major announcement later today at a press conference scheduled for 3.30 off campus. The guest list includes current county judge Nelson Wolf. County Judge-elect Peter Sakai and Bob Wills, the founder, CEO, and media director of PM Group, has started a campaign for name, image, and likeness deals for UTSA players. So that more than likely means Harris will be announcing his return to UTSA for one more year. That's after head coach Jeff Trailer appealed to help for help to keep coaches and players in the midst of their incredible success over the last two seasons. Meanwhile, UTSA officials have confirmed there will be a river parade this Friday night. It'll be at 7 p.m. at Artisan River Theaters to celebrate the Conference USA champs for both football and also for our soccer team winning their division as well, their conference, their championship. San Antonio Sports Hall of Fame named five new inductees to their class of 2023, among them former UTSA and Spurs guard Devin Brown, who helped the Spurs win their 05 title, four-time NCAA national tennis champ and later coach at Trinity. There's also Emily Burr Foster, who was just inducted in the San Antonio School District Athletic Hall of Fame past August. There's also a highly decorated track athlete and Olympic coach Rose Monday. Volleyball coach Wanda Bingham, who led Churchill to six state tournaments, winning two. And 2016 PGA champ and six-time PGA Tour winner Jimmy Walker.
especially with this being the 50th anniversary of Title IX and, and me coming right after that and just the opportunities that I have had as a woman and as an athlete, as a coach, thrilled to have three other women on this podium. This isn't about me. This is, you know, about kids from San Antonio that want to get to that level. Um, you know, it can be done. You just got to, you know, stay on the right path. Our San Antonio Spurs taking a break to help uh, spread a little holiday cheer. The Spurs season of giving continued yesterday at Wesley Health and Wellness Center, where the Silver and Black teamed up with Methodist Health for a Christmas tree giveaway. Doug McDermott and Isaiah Roby were joined by the Coyote and the Hype Squad to help give away 120 decorated Christmas trees and also wreaths. It means a lot, you know. Uh just growing up, this is always my favorite time of the year, you know, not just because it's basketball season, but because it's a season of giving, you know, some great holidays, um, and you're able to come out and make an impact on the community. Um, since I've been in the league, I just really enjoy this time of year, putting smiles on people's faces. We're just, we're really into doing this, and it's, it means a lot to our community. Spurs take on the Rockets at AT&T Center tomorrow night. Go Spurs go. We're hoping for a win. Time now 443 and 69 degrees for now. So get ready for some higher prices at the toy for toys for Christmas shopping. Up next, how a local toy store is staying in the Christmas spirit. Next, first look at a loss against Apple where two women are claiming the company's air tags make it much easier for stalkers to track their victims. In this morning's GMA First Look, the new lawsuit against Apple AirTags. It was just truly terrifying and it still just feels like an experience that I, you just never think you're going to go through. Lauren Hughes and another woman who is suing as a Jane Doe claim that their former partners used AirTags hidden on their cars to track their whereabouts without their knowledge. Hughes says she believes her ex placed the device she found on her wheel in order to track, harass, and threaten her. There is some evidence out there that Apple has had issues with the product and has made some efforts to improve its safety protocols, but that, according to these women and this lawsuit, those efforts were not sufficient. And we'll have much more on what this lawsuit could mean for Apple coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rhiannon Annali, ABC News, New York. Christmas is almost here, and that means it is go time for toy stores. You might think supply chain issues are a problem. However, Marilyn Morris shows us it's another issue entirely, that one that's not fun in games. Santa has nothing on Mary Adams when it comes to toys. They arrive by the box loads. Another shipment of slime has just come in. Every one of those boxes is a different kind. Adams runs the Stone Oak Learning Express, where a year ago, supply chain holdups were a huge challenge. How is supply chain this year? It's great. We have plenty of supply. Um, we haven't had an issue with that at all. So that's great. Now prices have gone up a little with inflation. Inflation is the new Grinch in town. Her wholesale costs are up. She estimates about 15%. It's tough. The big guy. Because we have Target right next to us, mm -hmm. which has lots of Legos, lots of supplies, and they get their products so much cheaper. So it is, it's tough. Inflation is tough on Santa's helpers too. Half of people in a Wallet Hub survey said Santa would spend less this year. So we have a six year old, a four year old, and then twins. Tara Poff Pellick says they're making adjustments. We're budgeting low this year. Yep, so each kid gets a lower amount. Knowing that budgets may be smaller, the toy industry is doing more of this, smaller versions. For instance, someone might not have $40 for this guy, but they have 15 for him. And classics are making a comeback, along with toys that run more on imagination than batteries. With so much inventory this year, Adam says she'll have sales to get the toys under the trees. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Let's take a look out there with Trans Guy looking over at Highway 281 at Sprucewood. Things are looking pretty good right now at 4.49 a.m. All I see is construction at 410 in Calabria and a disabled vehicle, 410 and Fredericksburg. That's it for now. Not too bad. We were bad. just talking about all the race trains and race cars and everything from, like that. And then Hot Wheels. The Hot Wheels. There, so yeah. yeah, they're still around. Yeah, I mean, they're a little different. I, I feel like they're smaller, but maybe I'm bigger. <laughs> <So>. <laughs>
<laughs> that that happens. <laughs> My brother and I one time took all of our Hot Wheels track, stretched it out in the street, see if we the little battery powered Hot Wheels. Remember those? They were called Sizzlers. Okay. And see if we get this, and it just would never stay on the track right there because the street was kind of ah uh, the good old days. Just reminiscing there yes. a little bit. So all right, it is the day of the full moon. Happy full moon. Ah. Ha happy full moon to you, Mike. Yes. Didn't get your card, but anyway, um, yeah, you're not going to be able to see it too well because. Yeah, we've got a lot of clouds out there, unfortunately, and a little bit of fog. You can see it's kind of murky looking over there by the uh, medical center. This is 10 looking out in toward the uh, out toward the north to the northwest. Two and a half miles visibility, Bernie stage two at Kerrville for Uvalde right now. Not bad in and around <coughs> San Antonio metropolitan area as of right now, but go out further to Rock Springs. More fog kind of on the uh, the perimeter, if you will. Beeville, Victoria, a lot of fog and it's going to be sticking around for the next couple of hours, so we'll have to watch that. Yeah, there's that 20% chance for a little bit of mist, uh, perhaps with some drizzle out there. Not anything to really write home about, just enough to make the roads kind of damp, and that's going to be the situation through the rest of the morning. Then we will start to see some sunshine again, like we saw yesterday, and that's going to get us downright hot. We will be anywhere from 10 to 15 degrees above normal, normal being 66 right or even more so than that up to 82. The record today is 83 degrees, so it's going to be a really close call and we stay very hot through the next week. Finally, as it's looking right now, there is a front that moves through early on Wednesday. So actually Wednesday is going to turn out to be one of those upside down days, a little bit warmer in the morning then cooler in the afternoon and then as of right now, it's looking even colder by getting into Thursday and Friday of next week. Kind of jumping ahead of myself here a little bit, but it's exciting to talk about a front finally. Look at the low temperatures. All of the low temperatures all the way through the middle of next week are above the normal high temperature, obviously well above the normal low. Two distinct batches of air in or actually three you got the really really cold arctic air up here the sub-zero readings in the northern portion of the united states and then just the cold stuff and very mild air down here and we've got basically two flows to the the jet stream here's the northern branch of it keeping the arctic air right up there and then the southern branch which is keeping all of this warm air on top of us and kind of preventing all that from moving down on top of us so this remains the situation like i said all the way through the rest of the week the weekend and going into next week finally by the middle part of next week that big trough is going to be digging out there to the west of us and this is the one that is finally going to grab hold of some of that colder air and pull that down here with the front moving through through. And again, that's going to be looks like in the, the wee hours of Wednesday morning. So like I said, we start off mild on Wednesday and then drop down throughout the day. 76 degrees today at noon, mostly cloudy skies. Already 10 above normal at noon, 82 for a high temperature. Like I said, very close call. You get a little bit bigger break in the clouds and we could very easily touch the record today. Then tomorrow the record is 84. So once again, we're going to be close to that 81 on Friday, 70s over the weekend. Morning mist, fog, um, a couple of showers scattered about here, there, but not really anything that's just, you know, jumping off the off the charts here. And then that front moves through on Tuesday. So, again, it's kind of a ho hum and that like make up your mind sort of forecast, I guess, best way to put it. Well, it's very frustrating forecasting this kind of weather because it's just like do something, will you? And it's not looking like it's going to do anything anytime soon. No, not until the middle of next week to anything mm -hmm. substantial. All right, well, my sweaters are on hold. What you see is what you get. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. 453, 69 degrees. And coming up next, Avatar, The Way of Water gets its London premiere. We're going to tell you how many sequels director James Cameron has already lined up. The reviews right now are stellar. Really? Yes. Interesting. The new Avatar movie is getting some rave early reviews uh, after its official premiere, and the dark Netflix comedy Wednesday continues to be a big hit. For latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Teach them our ways. It's official the Avatar sequel has been unleashed on audiences. It was screened for the first time at the world premiere last night in London. Director James Cameron saying production was shut down during COVID and it was scary times. But you know, here we are, people are coming back. Uh, the theaters are full again. Uh, we're sold out, you know, for the first few weeks. Uh, so yeah, it feels good. Feels like a, feels like a resurgence. He also has three more sequels ready to go if this one is a hit. Avatar The Way of Water lands in U.S. theaters a week from Friday. Water. Steak. Cheese.
critics like Abbott Elementary, the ABC sitcom The Leading TV Nominee for the Critics' Choice Awards, up for six, including Best Comedy. Defendant has requested to use the name Saul Goodman. The final season of Better Call Saul right behind with five nods, including Best Drama. The show airs live on The CW, January 15th. Are you feeling okay? You look a little... Pale. The dark Netflix comedy Wednesday continues to capture eyeballs. It's now the third most watched English language show on the streaming service, passing season two of Bridgerton. It debuted just 12 days ago. And singer and actress Sarah Bareilles with a birthday today, she's 43. While the great star Nicholas Holt is 33. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. I think Steph said she's already binged Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, loved it. Rooney and I are watching it again. <laughs> oh, we started all yeah. over. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 457, 69 degrees on your Wednesday morning. And Democratic Senator Raphael Warnock defeated Republican challenger Herschel Walker in Georgia's runoff election. Now the Democrats control the Senate and Republicans control the House. What that means for President Biden. We hear from some North San Antonio shoppers who are witnessing a rise in retail theft gangs at pharmacies and stores. Let's take a quick look at the roads with TransSky looking over there at Highway 281 at Spruce Wood. Things are looking okay this morning. They're still moving and our Stephen Cavazos is in the studio. We'll be checking in with him very soon. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. I'm ABC's Justin Finch in Washington following Georgia's Senate runoff election. Up next, a look at that pivotal race and what Raphael Warnock's win means for both parties. And taking a look outside with live cam, 68 degrees, uh, not cold at all this morning. Another warm start to your day. And a welcome to you. It is Wednesday. It is December 7th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you're having a good week so far and maybe you're getting used to the warmer weather. Yeah, we've been in a, a kind of a similar pattern for days and days now. And Mike, on a side note, a, a note on the date, December 7th, yes. I know most Pearl Harbor survivors are now gone, but we still remember the attack on Pearl Harbor, December 7th, 1941. Yes, indeed. And uh, not only Pearl Harbor survivors, but even just uh, folks that uh, fought in World War II, not many of those folks left. So if you ever run into one of them at all, maybe a grandfather or something like that, boy, just sit down and uh, hear some of the great stories from way back when. All right, yeah, we are definitely, as you were talking about, in a rut. We've got more fog and mist out there. Not as widespread as a couple of days ago, but it's still there. And 69 degrees, the record for the highest low temperature. We are not going to be hitting that today. It's in the low 70s, but we're really close to that. And then we're going to be close to a record later on this afternoon. That bottom number dew point is at 66, which means you got humidity up there at 90%. We are going to make it up to 82 today. Today, the record is 83. It's going to be a really close call. The aquifer on yesterday's reading dropped down a whole bunch, 1.2 feet and allergens with all this moisture out there. Mold is definitely on the high side. And like I said, once again, we do have some fog to deal with. Visibility obviously depends on where you are. Now it has dropped down slightly out there at the airport just in the past uh, couple of minutes. Same thing all around the metropolitan area, just a hint of it from Port SA over toward Randolph, New Braunfels, but then you go up 10, you're going to run into thicker fog just past the medical center going up toward Bernie Stage and Kerrville. A lot of fog. Primarily, it, the thickest is on sort of the bookends from Rock Springs down toward Eagle Pass and then here Beeville over toward Victoria. And this will be sticking around throughout the rest of the morning. Some mist as well. And again, we were near the record this morning. Then we are near the record later on today, just one degree away from that. And it obviously it's going to be very dependent on the clouds. So should those clouds, we had a couple of good holes in them yesterday. You get a bigger hole in the clouds right over the airport. May I Actually tie that record later on tomorrow will still be in the vicinity of a record high temperature and then going in through the weekend upper 70s in the afternoon 60s upper 60s in the mornings clouds couple of showers here and there not really anything to write home about and we're it's going to be a very warm start next week as well finally we have a cold front that is showing up in some of the long range computer models is going to be coming through midweek so finally it looks like it'll feel like december again but we got to make it through the next week. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, good morning, Mr. Cavazos. What's going on? Well, it's the uh, same story as yesterday, Mike. Uh, we're getting to look around town. Not a whole lot out there, but 
we have to keep a close eye on things as the morning commute does get rolling. Uh, giving you a shot here, some of these pixelated shots at Transguy. That's 281 right there at Hildebrandt. Just watch out for that curve. But US 90 at Nogalitos, traffic is picking up there, and that's one of those busy spots as people are making their way into the Alamo City. Now, while we aren't spotting any fog, there are some areas you want to watch out for. We mentioned that uh, damp roads could be an issue this morning, but I wouldn't be too concerned with it, at least at this point. Just drive carefully. 410 eastbound, we did have that stall that Mark was talking about there, so just make sure that you watch out for that stall vehicle and check your vehicle before you get out on the roadway. Let's give you a wide look at the map before we get to those travel times. Uh, notice that there is a little bit of a slowdown there along 281 right there at 1604. I'll have to get a closer peek from our friends at Transguide, but just remember to use caution. It looks like that could be in the northbound lanes again. That's right there, 281 as you approach 1604 on the north side. Now, travel times. All right, it's still pretty green from Seguin. 29 minutes on I-10 if you're traveling in those westbound lanes. Again, usual drive time from Lavernia on 87 northbound, about 33 minutes at this point, and 27 minutes for our friends down in Floresville. So nothing to be concerned about there, but we are going to have to keep a close eye here on these quiet roads for 10 at Ingram. I did also see some construction crews out there so make sure to give them plenty of room we'll have updates on that coming up in the next few minutes mark stuff thank you steven the capital murder trial against a former border patrol agent is almost over jonathan kota joins us live and walks us through the latest good morning jonathan Good morning, Mark, and that's right. Later this morning, those closing arguments are expected, followed by the jury's deliberation. Now, listen to this. If found guilty, Juan David Ortiz would automatically be sentenced to life in prison without parole. Now, we know Ortiz is accused of the murder of sex, uh, four sex workers near Laredo. Prosecutors spent days sharing evidence and testimony. Now, the defense has already rested its case without calling any witnesses. A firearm expert says bullet casings in those murders belong to the government issued weapon Ortiz to own. Now you can learn more on this case by watching KSAT's exclusive open court the trial of Juan David Ortiz on our website KSAT.com and of course on our TV app KSAT Plus and by going to YouTube. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. This morning, people living in North San Antonio are talking about a rise of retail theft gangs at pharmacies and retail stores in their area. We just marched in and I, I knew something was wrong. I mean, that's just, it just, there was nothing normal about it. Anthony Teyes says three minutes later, he saw the men dressed in black and faces covered, walking out with full duffel bags of stolen items. Police have talked about the increase in vehicle burglaries and retail theft stores during holidays. The owner of a security company says thefts and burglaries are up in every single type of business. He urges businesses to be to take all those precautions and clients to be good witnesses. You can help by being vigilant. You can help by reporting stuff that you see. And don't let someone else, the burden of calling in something that they see. Police say usually stolen items end up being sold online or at other locations where the price is too good to be true. Be sure to report anything suspicious you see to law enforcement. Well, the results of the nation's final midterm election are finally in. Georgia Senator Raphael Warnock has won re-election in a closely watched runoff race, defeating Republican challenger, former NFL star Herschel Walker. With Warnock's win, Democrats now hold a pivotal 51-seat Senate majority. ABC's Justin Finch is in Washington with more. The country's longest midterm campaign is now over. After a hard-fought campaign... <laughs> You got me for six more years. Democrat Raphael Warnock re-elected to the Senate, beating in battle former football star Herschel Walker. I'm never going to stop fighting for Georgia. You know, I'm not going to make any excuses now because we put up one heck of a fight. Walker's loss marking another political defeat for nominees backed by former President Trump. Walker and Warnock forced into a runoff race less than a month after neither won 50% of the midterm vote in November. This special runoff election drew blockbuster turnout, a record-breaking near 1.9 million Georgians casting ballots early and another 1.3 million voting on Election Day. It is my honor to utter the four most powerful words ever spoken in a democracy. The people have spoken. With Warnock reelected, Democrats have secured a 51-seat Senate majority, a crucial upper chamber edge. 
This puts Democrats in a dramatically better position in the Senate. Moving forward, they get an advantage on their committees. They're able to push aside the occasional dissenter. With that single extra seat, Democrats gain new advantages, including an easier path to move judicial nominees through Senate confirmations. And President Biden, former President Obama, and other major Democrats are all congratulating Warnock on his first full Senate term. After his 2021 runoff win, Warnock became the first black senator elected from Georgia. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. 509, 68 degrees. Apple is showing off a new karaoke feature. We're going to show you how it works and who has access. Man's best friend shot with an arrow. He ended up at a San Antonio vet. Now his owner says how his owner says it probably happened. And let's look out there with live cam this morning. We got up to about 80 degrees yesterday and this morning starting out at 68. You don't really need a jacket today. I brought the trash cans in last uh -huh. night. And I was like, what the heck? Do we live in Miami now? It feels like summer. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be right back. Well, we want to warn you that uh, some of the images and descriptions in this next story are graphic. A dog shot through the head with an arrow is expected to survive. Now his owner wants to know who did it and why. Boomer was shot sometime on Sunday near his family's home in Medina County. And now more than two days after having the arrow removed and being stitched up, Boomer looks to be well on his way to recovery. His owner, Ben Gomez, didn't want to go on camera, but he says that Boomer had wandered off before and chased neighborhood cats. So he thinks someone tried to kill his dog. Well, I don't see nobody with target with a target practice at, you know, a target somewhere. But you do think you know who might have been responsible? I think, but like I said, I can't prove it. Now, Gomez has filed a report with the Medina County Sheriff's Office. As for Boomer, he'll have the stitches removed in about two weeks, and they will check if there are any lasting impacts to his senses. Aww. 514, 68 degrees. And still ahead, why Apple says it will not now buy microchips produced at a new factory in the U.S. Plus how Google is revamping its search features with a new Carousel redesign. Sparkling gift sets from Pandora Jewelry at a special price. Oh, what a good time we will have. You can make it happen again. Voltaren, the joy of movement. What's the number one retinol brand used most by dermatologists? It's Neutrogena. Rapid wrinkle repair smooths the look of fine lines in one week, deep wrinkles in four. So you can kiss wrinkles goodbye. Neutrogena. In today's Tech Bites, Apple bringing business back to the U.S. The company has confirmed it will buy microchips produced in a new factory in Phoenix. The plant will start producing chips in 2024, and CEO Tim Cook has called the new plant only the beginning. Next, Google is changing its search for mobile devices. In addition to the usual filters, a list of related topics will appear at the top of the results page. You can add or remove topics, which are designated by a plus symbol, to quickly zoom in or even backtrack. And finally, a new karaoke feature for Apple Music users just in time for the holidays. Apple Music Sing allows subscribers to sing alongside real-time lyrics. Vocals can be set to a solo, a duet, even include background singers. There are tens of millions of songs to choose from. We can all channel our inner Mariah Carey. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. And welcome back, 518, Mike goes straight, party of four, your I table. Like, thank you I felt like you were trying to make an entry. Is now yes. available. Which, would you get seated if the whole party wasn't there at this Depends place? on the restaurant. I know. Here, yeah. here you can. Always we, confused. Here we, so. we wouldn't seat without you. I wouldn't sit down without you. you right. We wouldn't? I wouldn't. We wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Just make that a table for three, according to him. No, <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> Brunch on me. All right, let's okay, check on traffic. Uh, Steven's right. here with that. Well, you know what? Wait, yeah. Let's get back to the brunch on yeah. thing. 
you could take us to brunch later, but if you were to take us to brunch right now, we wouldn't have a whole lot of problems out there, but we do have construction. Uh, uh, that's always going to be a little, uh, you know, thorn in people's side whenever they have to get the day started. This is 410 at Ingram North. Uh, we do actually have a lot of road work that takes place along 410, so this is just a stretch of it there, and you can see at least two lanes are blocked off by crews. Make sure to give them plenty of room as you get the morning roll in there, but it uh, doesn't look like it's impacting traffic too much. But taking to the map now, uh, we did have this stall vehicle here off of E410 eastbound at Fredericksburg Road. That's not causing a whole lot of issues out there as well. Just check your vehicles before the morning gets rolling for you. Giving you a wide look at the map, did notice that there was a slowdown along 281 in the north side, just past 1604. Spoke to our friends over at Transguide, and we couldn't spot anything out there, so that's good news. Whatever was causing that slowdown looks like it's already cleared out. But something that will be taking up some space today is some bridge work along 410, a little bit later tonight, actually. Now, this has been current and should wrap on Monday, December 11th. Begins at 8 in the evening, wraps at 5 in the morning. Full closure of the main lanes in both directions right there from Bandera Road to State Highway 151. We all know there's a ton of work out there, and this is just a portion of it there along 410 at Ingram North. We'll watch the roads closely, but Mike have not spotted any fog just yet. There is a little bit of it out there. We will uh, show you that in a moment. First of all, just got to show you this because it is just extremely cute. Even Princess Myla has to cut the grass. Hopefully, I mean, adorable for uh, especially dad's sake that the enthusiasm about doing this continues when they can use the real lawnmower. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That was a situation in my house one time. Hey, this is kind of fun. That lasted about a day. So uh, <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for the KZAC Connect picture uh, out there looking over toward the medical center. Yeah, it's not bad. You can see the road appears to be kind of damp out there. We've got a little bit of the, that just kind of moisture hanging in the air. I didn't even see any mist on the windshield this morning, but there is a little bit of it out there. Go out to 10 even further, though, and you're going to run into some fog around Bernie stage. Kerrville, not bad at Castroville and Hondo, but things are starting to kind of there's just a hint of it out there in the metropolitan area and a lot more off to the west Eagle Pass now at zero visibility a lot of fog off to the east as well and then even in northern portions of the hill country temperatures are <clears throat> excuse me above what our normal high is right now that being 66 we are at 69 same thing Port SA and throughout the rest of the morning once again Things aren't going to change all that much. Temperatures will hold fairly steady. The 20% chance for, and I know these graphics look a little bit uh, ominous, but that little bit of mist or some drizzle out there, a possibility of it. Then we'll start to see some sunshine thrown on in, and we'll have enough. And again, the high temperature is going to be very, very dependent upon the uh, the amount or the high temperature of the amount of clouds we have. So you get a big hole in those clouds and that may actually go up. 82 is going to be one degree away from the record. So it'll be obviously a very close call. We've got uh, maybe a sprinkle or two trying to show up out there uh, in northern portions of the hill country, something detectable, but that's the exception rather than the rule. And then a lot of wintry weather. But notice how again, all this is kind of staying up there to the north of us, and we've got this flow coming in from the southwest. So two distinct kind of flows in the atmosphere, basically a zonal pattern. And what that means is things aren't going to be changing for us anytime soon. All that really cold air, December stays up to the north, and we remain in... September, August kind of weather around here. 76 degrees today at noon, mostly cloudy skies. Very warm, very humid, or could they just say hot and humid. We hit 80 yesterday. We're going to top that today again, one degree away from the record, up to 82. And then tomorrow, more of the same. Pretty much Friday, and that's going to continue through the weekend. Upper 70s, a few more clouds around over the weekend, maybe a shower or two. I mean, really can't even just kind of put your finger on when there would be a shower. Just, um, again, one or two of them here and there. Then the front's going to move through on early Wednesday morning as it, things are shaping up right now. So it would be a return to December by Wednesday in the latter part of next week. We wait. We wait yeah. a week. We wait. Yeah. For the hope. sweaters. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. And, and we would wait for you for brunch. Thank you. Aww, very much. Where are you taking us, by the way? I have no idea. I may have overpromised. 523, will, 68 degrees. We'll be happy to give you a recommendation. Okay. Yes, we will. Up next, a look at a special tribute at Kirstie Alley's Walk of Fame star, plus a look at nine nutcrackers in one place. 526, a sad tradition being carried out in Hollywood right now. CNN's David Daniel has that more in today's Hollywood Minute. 
The Hollywood Historic Trust placed flowers on Kirstie Alley's Walk of Fame star in memory of the Cheers and Look Who's Talking actress. Her children say she died Monday, not long after she was diagnosed with cancer. Kirstie Alley was 71. If just one performance of The Nutcracker isn't enough for you this December, Stage Access has you covered. The Performing Arts Streaming Service is offering nine different productions of the Christmas classic from around the world. The Sugar Plum Fairies and Toy Soldiers are available until December 31st. More details at stageaccess.com. You go on social media and you feel like a loser. <laughs> the message is that a better life is about more, more, more. Making a lot of money might make you feel good, but it won't make your kids love you. Oh! Here's what we can show you from the first trailer for The Subtle Art of Not Giving a <laughs> based on Mark Manson's best-selling self-help book. The film is in select theaters January 4th and on digital January 10th. In Hollywood, I'm David Dan. 527, 68 degrees. Some Capitol Police officers returned to the Capitol last night for the first time since the insurrection last year. How a special ceremony honored their sacrifice. You might be surprised at how many kids were hurt by toys last year. More than 152,000. Ahead we show you which toys hurt kids the most. It was a day unlike any other in our nation's history. And for us, it was a day defined by chaos, courage, tragic loss, and resolve. Officers who fought to defend the Capitol during the January 6th insurrection are given special honors. How both Republicans and Democrats are proclaiming them as heroes of democracy. And once out again, out there with live cam, we're a little warm and humid to start your day. 68 degrees for now and expecting temperatures to rise. Here's the good news. You've made it to midweek. It is Wednesday, December 7th. It doesn't feel that way, but, you know, maybe later it'll change. Later, later. We got to wait. Okay. Yeah, at least a week for some big changes to come about here. So, but yeah, until then, it's going to feel like September. More like, like September. More like September. Yeah. Good yeah. news is there's still plenty of time till Christmas. We have another chance to cool down, several chances to cool down. Yeah. As yes, indeed. And, and like I said, it is looking more encouraging that we are going to be seeing another front move through here. But again, it's going to take at least a week to get through here. Out there by the airport, not bad looking. Again, think back a couple of days, couldn't see anything. And then even yesterday, at one point, it kept going back and forth as far as the fog is concerned. There's a little bit of a haze off in the distance. And we do have some fog around the area right now. We got a ton of humidity out there. I mean, the dew point is running basically neck and neck with the air temperature. A little bit of a breeze that helps, though, to prevent fog. If you have just no wind at all or very, very light wind, that's going to be an easier chance or a better situation, better setup for some fog to develop. Go out 10, though. You're going to run into some around Bernie Stage, Kerrville. Not bad around the rest of the metropolitan area. A lot more fog off to the west. Eagle Pass at zero visibility right now. Victoria is at just a quarter mile. Same thing right now at uh, Beeville. Corpus Christi is not doing too bad. So not as widespread. Well, it is as widespread, but not as thick as what it was just a couple of days ago. Temperatures right now, everybody is above their respective normal high. On the upper 60s right now, normal high is being 66 degrees. Mold is also on the high side. We did not hit a record this morning. Close to it, though, the record for the warmest low temperature is in the low 70s. We're also, though, going to be close to a record high temperature later on today. 82, the record is 83, most of the cloudy skies. A little bit of sunshine kind of thrown on in there. And again, you get a bigger break in the clouds over the airport, we may actually hit that record today. Close to it again tomorrow stays very warm. Warm and humid all the way through the weekend. We'll see when that front's going to be moving on through here in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority. Did you say you had problems earlier out there on the roads? We did have uh, some construction, Mike. Uh, those flashing lights, they're now out of the way. 410 at Marbach. Let's get a quick look around town. Although that particular spot has wrapped up uh, where we saw the construction taking place, we saw the other areas that we want drivers to be on the lookout for. Check out 35 at Thousand Oaks. You can see that traffic's getting pretty busy in both the north and southbound lanes there, as well as 35 at Pine. But uh, again, we're not, uh, don't, we don't have major issues out on the roadway, at least at this point. Construction will be the big talking point. But you can see a little bit of more of that fog creeping in some of these transguide cameras, more so than what I saw in the last half. 
half hour of the show. But taking you to the map, uh, nothing here to show you. Nothing at all, which is great. So it's again, perfect time. If you are up and maybe you want to grab that cup of coffee, take advantage of these quiet roadways, or maybe you want to drive into the Alamo City right now because that journey from Bernie, you're still on the green. 24 minutes right now on I-10 eastbound, about 27 minutes, so don't hurry. Coming in from Bull Verde, 281 southbound with 27 and 25 on I-35. Looks like to, to be pretty good right now in the southbound lanes of New Braunfels coming in this early. So no worries there, but taking it back to Transguide, 37 at Fair Avenue, a quieter shot there, but we know traffic will pick up in the next half hour or so. We'll watch the roads closely and have those updates right here on GMSA. Mark Stuff. Stephen, thank you. Officers who defended the U.S. Capitol during the January 6th insurrection are awarded congressional gold medals. As CNN's Jen Sullivan reports, a special ceremony was held in their honor in Washington, D.C., just ahead of the release of a final report by the House Select Committee. Officers who fought to defend the Capitol during the January 6, 2021 insurrection were awarded Congress's highest honor Tuesday. Our nation suffered the most staggering assault on democracy since the Civil War. January 6 was a day of horror and heartbreak, yet it's also a moment of extraordinary heroism. Congressional gold medals were handed out to several law enforcement members from the U.S. Capitol Police, as well as to the D.C. Metropolitan Police who fought that day and to surviving family. Putting on the badge means putting yourselves in harm ways to protect others, to keep the country safe. These brave men and women are heroes. Tuesday's ceremony was held in the Capitol Rotunda. For some officers, it was the first time returning since violent protesters stormed the building nearly two years ago, causing an estimated one and a half million dollars in damage. It was a day unlike any other in our nation's history. And for us, it was a day defined by chaos, courage, tragic loss and resolve. But there was a moment of tension Tuesday as the family of fallen officer Brian Sicknick refused to shake hands with House GOP leader Kevin McCarthy or Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell when they accepted the medal. Sicknick suffered a stroke a day after the attack and died of natural causes. I'm Jen Sullivan reporting. A federal judge has thrown out a lawsuit against Saudi Prince Mohammed bin Salman for killing journalist Jamal Khashoggi. The Washington Post journalist's fiance filed suit in federal court against bin Salman for murder. It was dismissed because as Prime Minister bin Salman is entitled to head of state immunity. Judge John Bates expressed his uneasiness in having to throw out the case. He points out bin Salman was made a prime minister after the murder and says it was probably a ploy designed specifically so he could get diplomatic immunity. Actress Anne Heche did not have drugs in her system at the time of her death. That is according to a report from a Los Angeles County medical examiner. The report says certain drugs were found in her body, but they weren't active at the time of the accident. The actress died in an August 5th car crash. Her death was ruled as an accident. The coroner cited inhalation and thermal injuries as the cause of death. We all thought it was over, but the legal drama between exes Amber Heard and actor Johnny Depp still ongoing. The Los Angeles Times report Heard's lawyers have appealed the defamation case she lost. They say there were several errors in trial earlier this year, including no proof of actual malice. Depp sued actress Amber Heard for defamation after she wrote a 2018 op-ed in the Washington Post. She countersued. Depp was, as we all know now, awarded $10 million in compensatory damages and $350,000 in punitive. Heard was awarded $2 million in compensatory damages. Depp has already appealed that decision to the award money uh, that Heard received. Time now, 538 and 68 degrees for now. Millions of Americans end up getting some kind of foodborne illness every year. How the FDA is trying to change things to lower that number. More than 152,000 children were hurt last year due to toy-related ER-treated injuries. Up next, how to make sure the gifts you choose don't cause this problem. And outside with live cam on your Wednesday morning, 18 days till Christmas. Time to get those gifts ordered. By 40, welcome back. A warning from product safety officials as you shop this holiday season. They say be sure the gifts and toys you're buying are safe for those you're giving them to. CNN's Mandy Gaither demonstrates how to make sure your presents don't pose a danger. 
It's the season for giving, but the wrong gift can be dangerous. We want you to have a safe holiday season and not end up in the emergency room. The latest report from the Consumer Product Safety Commission found there were more than 152,000 toy-related ER-treated injuries to children younger than 15 years old last year. The injuries included lacerations, contusions, and abrasions to the child's face and head. There were also two deaths. That fatalities were associated with choking on a small part and also supplicating on a plush toy that was added to an unsafe sleep environment. The report shows non-motorized scooters continued to be the category of toy that led to the most injuries in children under 15. If you choose a riding toy such as a scooter, bicycle, skateboard, be sure to also include the safety gear that goes along with it. That includes a well-fitting helmet and other pads. When it comes to children under three, keep small balls and toys with small parts as well as button batteries out of reach. Instead, choose age-appropriate toys. It's so important that you choose age-appropriate toys. The best way to do that is to look at the age labeling on the product packaging and use that as a guide. Once the gifts are opened, also be sure to discard any plastic wrappings or packaging on toys so young children don't play with them. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. 542, 68 degrees. And coming up next, the Animal Defense League is standing by with a precious pet. That needs a new home this oh, holiday just season. Oh, baby. I know. Well, Nani is here from the Animal Defense League, and we have never had one this itty bitty on the show before. This is a little tiny bottle baby. Any name yet? His name is Dusty Bottoms, and he's only 12 days old. Oh, my goodness gracious. And no mama. I mean, whether mom doesn't want to nurse him or doesn't have a mama. Mm -hmm. And this is why, and she's really putting out the plea for fosters. So yes. if you can, because otherwise they all have to do it. And there's so many little puppies there. Yes. And these guys just need to be, just need yes. to be bottle fed. If you want to, and sometimes it's it's this like someone like him like Dusty Bottoms and right now we have three moms with a few puppies um, so sometimes it's just opening your home and having giving them that space so that mommy can nurse them and really take care of them for at least um, until they're about two months. So sometimes you can take the individual dog or mom and her, and litter, her litter and litter. just keep them right there. Yes. And the yes. nice thing is they provide everything you need if it's food for mom if it's all the formula heating whatever. pads uh, formula anything we okay. will take care of that for you well we just ask that you help us and that will alleviate them from being at the shelter give them some time to rest while also allowing ADL to save more lives like okay. these and give them a bit of a break because I mean there's only so many so many volunteers to go around over there so if you would like to uh, foster and again any age one two the whole litter mom and everybody uh, and some are the little bottle babies and people love the bottle babies yeah. head on over to the uh, Animal Defense League, Leventhal Garden in Nacogdoches, the Paul Jolly Center across from the zoo, or the PetSmart over there on Four Winds, adltexas.org, or give them a call and you can find out more about fostering. Thank you, dear. In your morning consumer headlines, according to the CDC, about 48 million Americans get some kind of foodborne illness every year. So now the Food and Drug Administration says food safety needs a major overhaul. That's according to a report done on the agency by an independent group of experts. After heavy criticism for their handling of the baby formula shortage, the FDA commissioner asked for a thorough review of the agency. Experts say the U.S. food supply is generally recognized as safe, but they say the FDA needs to be much more proactive in dealing with foodborne pathogens in order to protect Americans. It is suggesting that the agency create a separate center for nutrition within the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Good news for anyone driving this holiday season. Gas prices should continue to go down. Oil prices have now hit their lowest level of the year so far, falling to just over $74 a barrel. That's 43% lower from the peak of more than 130 a barrel back in March. Meanwhile, prices at the pump have dropped an average of 42 cents during the past month or so. Good, good news. That is good news. And 548, looking at the Transguy cameras, not too bad from this angle.
We have good news over here as well, guys. Uh, good thing is there's not really a lot to show you, just some quiet roadways. We're inching closer and closer to that busy 6 a.m. hour, but right now is a perfect opportunity to take advantage of the roadways. Check out 10 at the Y, but 1604 at Wiseman, again, some of that fog is creeping in some of those trans guide cameras. Not causing an issue for drivers, at least at this point, but we are seeing some road work that continues to take place. This is current. I mentioned this earlier in the week, but just make sure that you watch out for this. It should, a portion of it should wrap up next Wednesday, December 14th, over off I-10 on the east side of Bear County. Overlay work begins at 9 in the morning, should wrap at 4 in the afternoon. The I-10 westbound frontage road will see some alternating lane closures right there at Ackerman Road, but I wouldn't say that it's a big cause for uh, dr issue for drivers at this point. I was checking the map and have not spotted any major slowdowns, but uh, again, roads will probably change in the next few minutes or so. That's always the case, but for now, I would just say just drive safe and watch out for some of that fog that Mike's been mentioning. Yes, sir. Thank you, Stephen. It's a little bald baby got to you, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Who wouldn't? D yeah. Dusty bottoms. Well, 12 days old. <laughs> Aww. And they said sometimes, again, moms with the entire litter, they just, you know, need a little bit of a break from there and they can open up more cages. So if you can open up your home and they supply everything for you, except getting up maybe in the middle of the night with a little wind <laughs> right. and all that stuff. <laughs> That's the catch. But the people that are, are yeah. big hearted enough to do this, neither though that comes with the territory. Yeah. Right. So. And, and, cute and cute for the kids, too, to, you know, bottle feed little little babies like that. So, yeah. all right, uh, I love this picture, and my mouth is kind of watering a little bit. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, peppermint candies are made. Hmm. Nice. Looks good. It looks very good. And I love not only the red, the green, but then the red and green stripes and the white ones in there. So Very pretty. Wonderful. Have you all made your Christmas cookies yet? No. no. Full confession, my girlfriend made four boxes of my grandmother's sugar cookies, including homemade icing. Yeah. I finished the last one last night. I killed them in like a week. Well, that's wow. a way to get in the holiday spirit. Well, we need the Good kit. Lord. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And again, did he share with his friends? No. So uh, if your girlfriend's watching, can she make us some now? So I'll just be forward and, and ask for him. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, thank you for the KSAC Connect picture, by the way. And the cookies look delicious. A little bit of fog is showing up out there at the airport right now. The road doesn't look too bad, maybe kind of on the damp side, six miles visibility. But then you go up by 10, mile and a half at Bernie stage. So these numbers can change really, really easily and really quickly. That's what we'll have to watch out for. More fog heading out into the hill country out there toward Eagle Pass. It's actually improved slightly. And then some down around Beeville, Victoria. Victoria. So just be on the lookout the next couple of hours because you may, you know, turn the corner in a low lying area, run into uh, some of this fog as well. Temp Temperatures, well, hey, well, lights went out very quickly. There we go. Temperatures are going to be staying steady this morning, and this 20% is just uh, a little bit of mist out there, maybe some drizzle, something like that. And then we'll make it up into the mid 70s at noon. Just to put it in perspective, normal low temperature, excuse me, normal high temperature, normal low is in the uh, mid 40s, normal high is mid 60s right now. So we're way above that and we'll see some sunshine later on today. 82 for a high temperature. The record is 83. Get a bigger hole in the clouds over the airport may actually uh, hit that record. There's all of our low clouds, this darker shade of gray showing up. There may be a little bit more than a couple of sprinkles perhaps out in the hill country right now around the country. There is not really a lot going on, but one thing if you stand back and sort of uh, take a look at the way all these clouds are moving across the country, primarily in a west to east fashion, and there's two distinct kind of bands, one up there to the north, one down here to the south, and those are the kind of two branches of the jet stream. One is keeping the really cold air further up to the north, and then the other one's keeping us very warm and mild. Speaking of warm and also then humidity, yeah, the humidity is going to stay very high all the way through Monday as well as Tuesday. Then we do have another front that's going to be moving on through here. Here's uh, going through the long range computer model. And there's not much of a change going on each and every day. We'll have a lot of clouds in the morning, some sunshine in the afternoon. Then we get into Saturday. There could be a couple of sprinkles around here. Really wouldn't count on it. I mean, it depends on what computer model. And these things are constantly changing. So it's not like you can really grasp any one particular feature in the weather coming up over the next couple of days, uh, except for the fact that it's going to be warm and humid. Now we go into Tuesday then, and that's when we'll start to see the slightly better chance for some rain. And this is going to be the front moving through here early on Wednesday. That will get rid of this uh, 
undecember like weather we're having right now and it's going to feel a whole lot more get you back in the Christmas spirit 76 degrees at noon most of the cloudy skies high temperatures going to make it up to 82 Again, the record is 83 real close and that's going to be the case tomorrow as well with the record of 84 degrees then we get into the weekend it stays very warm and humid morning mist and drizzle a couple of showers here and there we really can't pinpoint rain, just you know, one or two little sprinkles. And then that front's going to move through early Wednesday morning and knock temperatures back down. If it, if it is a word, I think on December like is the word of the week for sure. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, but maybe next week. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Right now, 554, 68 degrees. Let's look at your winning lotto numbers. Pick three, nine, five, one, fireball eight. Daily four, nine, one, three, zero, fireball seven. Cash five numbers, three, seven, 10, 14, 33. And Mega Millions, nobody won again last night, guys. It's up to $379 million. And there are your numbers. Powerwall's up to $100 million. We'll be right back. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the reaction to the runoff race in Georgia. Senator Raphael Warnock winning re-election, defeating Herschel Walker, and what it means for President Biden. And then an ABC News exclusive with the couple who was on the cruise ship that was hit by that deadly rogue wave. They're speaking out about their own harrowing journey. And you'll see their stories and so much more right here on GMA. San Antonio Public Library is getting into the holiday spirit. Cody Library hosted a party with hot chocolate games and mini snowmen last night. There are more events planned and for the rest of the month of December. We have the schedule all laid out right now on KSAT.com. We're breaking overnight in Germany. Police carry out a series of raids against suspected extremists. Ahead in the next hour, we'll tell you what authorities believe they were trying to do. And Transguide right now, we have traffic uh, moving there with a uh, 1604. I believe that was at uh, 1604 and FM 78. Anyway, moving on, 281 at Sprucewood and 410 at Ingram. The arrows are flashing there. We'll be right back. I'm ABC's Justin Finch in Washington following Georgia's Senate runoff election. Up next, a look at that pivotal race and what Raphael Warnock's win means for both parties. It is a date that still lives in infamy. 81 years ago today, the United States attacked by at Pearl Harbor by the Naval and Air Forces of the Empire of Japan. This morning, we're looking back at that fateful day in U.S. history. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, starting at 68 degrees. You don't need a jacket today, and you probably won't need one tomorrow. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. We've made it to midweek. It is Wednesday, December 7th. We hope you've had a good week so far and, you know, hope you're maybe giving the AC, no, I was going to say the AC a break, actually the heater a break and going to have to turn on the AC at some point. We are in a bit of a rut around here weather-wise. We've had morning drizzle and fog and it looks like it's kind of starting all over again, Mike, as far as uh, thickening up a bit. Yeah, and, and just trying to sort things out and it's just kind of all over the place as far as, you know, is there a little bit of rain here? we got the mist and drizzle, those warm temperatures, and uh, finally, by middle of next week, there looks like there's some hope as far as a more significant change because, yeah, this rut is just going to continue. This this sort of ho-hum, blase kind of weather with all the clouds hanging around here in the morning. Looks like the road may be a bit damp over there by the airport. Some fog, reduced visibility at the airport right now. Casterville, it's starting to maybe get a little thicker there and then head up I-10 and toward Bernie Stage and Kerrville. A lot more fog also off to the east around Gonzales, Victoria, Beaville heavier fog, Rock Springs, Eagle Pass, as well as that. So it seems like it's kind of on the, on the bookends this morning as opposed to uh, just covering the, the whole place this morning. 69 degrees right now. Normal high temperature is 66. So we are just way, way out of whack. And mold is on the high side. The updated count is going to be coming up in about an hour, hour and a half or so. Temperatures will pretty much hold steady all morning long where they are. And we'll have a lot of claw, clouds, some mist, a little bit of drizzle here and there. And then we make it up into the mid 70s, kind of like yesterday already at noon. And we did top 80 yesterday and today we're going to make it up to 82. The record is 83 degrees, so it's going to be very, very close. Obviously, you get a little bit bigger hole in the clouds right over the airport. We may actually hit that record going to be close to a record tomorrow as well and still stays 
basically hot and humid. A couple of sprinkles over the weekend. We'll talk about that front when it's scheduled to arrive. That's coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Mr. Cavazos, what's going on? Well, not a fan of the heat or the humidity, but I am a fan of what we are seeing on these Transguide cameras. Mike, let's get a quick look around town. 35 at Thousand Oaks, just steady traffic right now as we've entered the 6 a.m. hour. 35 at Pine, it is getting a little bit busier out there, but I wouldn't say it's time to just head out the door and get the day started. Take your time. Um, but some of these Transguide cameras, we've seen a little bit of the fog creep in. For instance, there along US 90. That was a quick shot from our friends at Transguide, but I'm keeping a very close eye on the cameras that we have here in the studio. Now let's get you to the map. No issues to report just yet. It has been a pretty quiet start to this Tuesday, Wednesday morning. Pardon me, we don't want to go back a day, but a little quiet for this Wednesday morning. But watch out for some of the road work that's taking place and also take your time as you are heading your uh, getting your day started here because there's no need to rush. As I mentioned earlier, pretty pleasant from I 37 in those northbound lanes with 28 minutes right now on uh, this early in the morning, 30 minutes on US 90 eastbound heading in from Castroville and that arrival from Lytle should be within about 16 minutes. So again, thank Things are pretty quiet right now. You can take your time, take advantage of the roadways, but we will keep a close eye on things as the morning commute does pick up and give you those updates on road closures. That'll be in the next few minutes. Mark stuff. Stephen, thank you. New this morning, if you live in Guadalupe County, you smell may smell gas when you step outside this morning, but officials say there's no need to be alarmed. Guadalupe County Fire and other surrounding law enforcement have received several reports of a gas smell from people in unincorporated areas of Guadalupe County between New Braunfels and the McQueenie area. We're told there is a smell in the air, but no gas service providers have confirmed a leak with Guadalupe County. We will keep you updated if anything changes. Also overnight, a fire on the northeast side of town. It happened on a street called Tool Yard near Warsbach Parkway. We are told the fire went through an abandoned shed and an old quarry. Power had to be cut off before crews could knock down the flames. No one was hurt. Breaking overnight in Germany, thousands of police officers carried out a series of raids against suspected extremists who were allegedly trying to overthrow the German government in an armed coup. About 3,000 officers searched at 130 areas. The raids are being called an anti-terrorism operation. We know 25 people were detained and dozens more are being investigated in Germany and also one location in Italy. Today marks a somber day as we honor and remember the over 2,000 service members and civilians killed in the attack of Pearl Harbor 81 years ago. Just a handful of survivors will be gathering today exactly where the attacks unfolded. Our Jonathan Cotto joins us in the newsroom to walk us through how this day will play out. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Stephanie. Good morning, Mark. And that's right. There are only a handful of centenarian survivors left, but those few are expected to arrive at Pearl Harbor today to reflect, to remember and pay their respects to their shipmates who perished. And part of what's in their memory are these images, the scene 81 years ago at Pearl Harbor, the moments that Pearl Harbor, a U.S. naval base, was attacked 81 years ago. Now, we know that less than a dozen survivors are expected to be at today's memorial, fewer than in recent years. Part of that decline, of course, is many of those still alive are at least 100 years old. To give you some perspective, the youngest service member 81 years ago today would have been about 17, making them 98 years old today. Now, the ceremony will feature a moment of silence right at 7.55 a.m., this is the minute the attack began, and it will also include a missing man formation flyover. 2,400 servicemen were killed in the bombing. This catapulted the U.S. into World War II. Now, historians estimate there were about 87, uh, excuse me, 87,000 service members in Oahu at the time of the attack. And on the USS Arizona, um, over 1,000 service members were killed. That's more than half of the total death toll uh, that morning. Again, this event will be taking place this morning at Pearl Harbor. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. More trouble for District 10 City Council member Clayton Perry. San Antonio police filed an at-large case of DWI against the councilman. It comes exactly one month since the hit and run crash he admitted to being involved in. The Vera County District Attorney's Office also confirmed that case along with the charge of failure to stop and render aid. Now prosecutors are reviewing the case. From there, they will decide whether to prosecute. Right now, it's not clear when they will make that decision.
A delay in accountability has Uvalde's mayor speaking out. He argues Uvalde's district attorney is not telling the truth. Mayor Don McLaughlin wants to move forward with as many changes as needed for the city police department, but he can't do that until investigator Jesse Prado finishes investigating the department's response on the day of the shooting at Robb Elementary. Materials like body cam video and audio are being withheld. District Attorney Christina Mitchell has said releasing information would impact her own criminal investigation. McLaughlin disagrees. Mr. Prado told her that it would be kept strictly confidential, wouldn't be released without her okay. And he also told her that if he came across anything that was criminal that they had missed, he has an obligation and a duty to bring that forward to her. The mayor hopes a lawsuit already filed against Mitchell will urge her to release materials. According to the suit, Mitchell's criminal investigation should have wrapped up last month. We've called and emailed the district attorney, but have not heard back from Ms. Mitchell. The results of the nation's final midterm election are finally in. Georgia Senator Raphael Warnock has won re-election in a closely watched runoff race, defeating Republican challenger Herschel Walker. With Warnock's win, Democrats now hold a pivotal 51-seat Senate majority. ABC's Justin Finch has more. Good morning. Senator-elect Raphael Warnock told supporters he's looking forward to getting back to work today after celebrating his victory Tuesday. And back here in Washington, Warnock's win carries major implications on Capitol Hill. The country's longest midterm campaign is now over. You got me for six more years. Democrat Raphael Warnock re-elected to the Senate, beating and battled former football star Herschel Walker. Now I'm not going to make any excuses now because we put up one heck of a fight. Walker's loss marking another political defeat for nominees backed by former President Trump. A record-breaking near 1.9 million Georgians casting ballots early and another 1.3 million voting on Election Day. The people have spoken. <laughs> With Warnock re-elected, Democrats have secured a 51-seat Senate majority. This puts Democrats in a dramatically better position in the Senate. Democrats gain new advantages, including an easier path to move judicial nominees through Senate confirmations. And President Biden, former President Obama, and other major Democrats are all congratulating Warnock on his first full Senate term. After his 2021 runoff win, Warnock became the first black senator elected from Georgia. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Well, a warning from Walmart is topping your consumer news this morning. The retail giant says if stealing within its stores doesn't slow down, some of those stores may have to close. CEO Doug McMillan says thefts by shoppers and even employees are now higher th at higher than usual levers, levels. Of the biggest drivers of inflation, maybe, I'm sorry, one of the biggest drivers of inflation may be on the verge of easing off. Wall Street Journal says there are indications that housing costs may have peaked and are likely heading backwards. Economists pointing to indexes on rent prices, which are now coming in below pre-pandemic levels. And something that is still expensive right now, Christmas trees. Some tree farms say that their year's harvest looks good this year and they don't expect shortages. However, Christmas trees are still going to cost you a lot more. That's because tree farms operating costs from labor and raw materials to shipping trees to retailers have also risen over the last year. Now 611, 68 degrees. And people are talking about a rise of retail thefts. Coming up a little later on GMSA, what security companies are urging businesses to do as they prepare for the holiday shopping rush. We'll just add the pumpkin spice pickle this deer found itself in and how residents are trying to find the stuck buck. Goodness, taking a look out there with live cam. Yeah, it's December 7th. It doesn't really feel that way. 68 degrees, mild though. We'll take that. We'll be right back.